Okay. And we are back between two yattis with... I dream about you, actually. <laughs> I really do. I really do. That's great, Lee. <laughs> Brian Barr. <laughs> I see you, Lee. The man of my dreams. <laughs> and you will find out why shortly. So, this is your opportunity. This is your 30-second elevator pitch. What do you do, and why do you do it? So what we do is we bring music into the, uh, the lives of people and they can use it everywhere in their lives, not just inside their house, but outdoors. And we hang out often with the most famous bands and DJs. I spend a lot of my time in the studios and I hear the details and the, the passion that are in those studios when those artists are making their, you know, they're putting their best foot forward. And then to try to bring it back into the client's lives is, is, a, is a challenge which requires an entire team. And uh, a lot of clients don't realize what that studio sounded like. You know, when, when we hang out with the most famous musicians in the world, we bring tears to their eyes when we play their equipment back in the studio through our equipment, better than they've ever heard in their life. So, I've just had my mind blown, just for a second, because you're a technician, aren't you? Our, my background's interesting. My mom's entire family, my brother and I both, uh, we both founded CAT, uh, we're all studio musicians. And my father's side right. of the family was engineering, and uh, I never wanted a real job, so uh, we put together the musical world with the engineering world and uh, worked a lot of professors and many other people and, and, and put it forth. Because you, I just asked you what you do and you just told me why you do it. <laughs> what they actually do is make the world's best speakers, but you just, yeah, so you're not the technician. You I just was for a while. My brother's the technician. <laughs> you <laughs> no, push no. the boundaries of where it can go. My brother pushes our engineering departments now, yeah, absolutely. You know, what we, you know to give you an idea, so if someone held, I've been able to hold a Stradivari violin or a Guarneri violin. These are you know, like they, $4 million. They're $4 million, $10 million. And when, you know, I, I play a lot of instruments. When you first put that string on that bow, that thing comes to life. One, because like you said, it's four or $5 million. So, but literally the thing begins to vibrate and come to life and hit resonances that are so beautiful. If you sit down, I was a piano player for, for half my life. Uh, when you sit down at a nine foot concert grand and you, you, you hit that bottom note, when you, when you hit that bottom A on a pipe organ, when, to be able to hear these in the best cathedrals and so forth, I want to bring that back into clients' lives. So like, you know, most recently we were in East West Studios a lot. Um, in Los Angeles, we have a multi-million dollar cat system there on Sunset Boulevard. And I'm friends with a lot, of, a lot of the studio engineers and Candace is the manager. I've been able to hang out with a lot of the A-list artists. You know, every one of the rooms, Studio One, Studio Two, Studio Three, you know, these things have gone back since the 50s in some cases, but they have, they have one million dollar boards, another two or three million dollars of the world's best equipment in the studio. And then when the bands come in, they're bringing another half a million, million, five million, ten million dollars worth of instruments and the best talents of the world. And they're putting all this down and the labor of love and the passion is there. And then it leaves and it might go all the way down to some MP3 on somebody's headset and they never get to experience those feelings. It, you know, sound is not just about hearing it, but it's about feeling it. When you sit front row at the Vienna Philharmonic, when you sit in the Concertabau here in, in, in Amsterdam, you, you, and 12 cellos go boom, 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 you feel that vibration come through your body. If you sit on the floor at an NBA game and your feet are touching that, that hardwood, you actually feel the vibrations of those players coming to you. So, so you say, you know, what do we do? We, it, it's a combination, obviously, of art and engineering to bring this into clients' lives. And a lot of the clients don't even see how that's going to fit into their lives. So for example, on a yacht, we just spent the last hour with with some fantastic people that book a lot of the talents onto our clients' yachts. You know, they, they brought David Guetta onto one of the yachts this summer, for example, and they've, they've worked with everybody from Coldplay to Elton John. You know, they, a lot of clients don't realize they could even bring Elton John or Coldplay or David Guetta onto the yacht. And then they ask, where? I'm like, where? You have a helicopter deck. They're like, yeah, but there's a helicopter on it. I'm like, but you can move the helicopter towards the back of the deck and still have room for 100 people, or you could take the helicopter off the deck and then you have a, even more room. And they don't even think about it. But on the engineering side, that deck has to be ready for the electrical power. That deck has to be ready for you know, the weight distribution. That deck has to be ready for the waterproofness of all the equipment that's out there in the salt air. Because you know, when a band comes, when David Guetta comes, he wants to land on a helicopter with his, with, with his computer. Yeah. You know, when a band comes, they might want to come with one little mixing board that goes into something else, that, the big mixing boards that are already permanently on that yacht. They want to travel with the least amount of equipment possible. But you know, when you think about it, it's not just about bringing a band or DJ on board. How about yoga in the morning with some music? And music even at low volume levels that you can feel. Yeah. You can feel that through your body. How about in the afternoon, maybe you want to go wave running, you know, with your whole family out there, or slide through the slides, or go swimming around your yacht, and you want to be able to hear that music out there, not just some background, even, even on the yacht. And when people talk about background, you know, I, I, Alistair Levine, our, our director of sales and marketing, we travel together a lot, and there's a restaurant in New York that we hang out quite a bit, and he was at the end of the bar, and after two or three hours, we spoke to some women that were next to us, and he said, you know, 
can you tell us any song you've heard in the last two hours? And the answer is no, because <laughs> it was really background. It's just background. Ba background can be low enough volumes where you can talk, but if that low bass is still there and you can feel it, subconsciously, subliminally, it's still going to take that mood up. You know, when you talk to a DJ, it's hmm. about beats per minute. If, if the music is very mellow and slow, it's going to put you into that kind of relaxing feel. If it's a little bit faster, even at low volumes, it'll lift your mood up. So, you know, you have people that, that look, look at that yacht throughout the day, yoga in the morning, wave running in the afternoon, sun decking. Then at, then at nighttime, you can have your DJ, you can also have your symphony. Or you could literally just sit out there and have high tea. Yeah. Well, this comes to the bit, so, I said this the other night, I hate you and I love you because you've Sick. ruined my life. When you listen to their speakers for the first time, it will destroy your perception of what good sound, what you thought good sound was. Unless you've ever heard live music. And most people have. No, no, no. The trouble is live music is all fucking mic'd as well. If it's mic'd as well, that's not what I'm talking about. If you've actually had the benefit of sitting just in a, in a trio or a jazz quartet and heard that instrument play. Very few or people have. Very few people have. Or just one piano playing. So again, you know, look, look at the instruments. The real instruments are made out of the best woods, the best steels, yeah. the best brass. And most speakers, quite frankly, unfortunately, are made out of, you know, cardboard. cardboard. Particle board and paper. You, you use like titanium, Absolutely. And gold, and yeah, yes. Magnet. I mean, it's just. <laughs> <laughs> so but when you listen to a when I when I listen to the Bose three two one system, I'm just oh, because it's the noise of the system, isn't it? Yeah, it's a lot hearing. Of so so you, you know you just brought up materials, and and at university, my brother and I studied civil engineering with an emphasis in material science. Hang on, if so you, you, you're a, an artist and you're an engineer as well. That's why I'm still making speakers for a living. I never grew up. <laughs> Jesus. There are very few people who are artists who are clever enough. We're very fortunate, for yeah. sure. But I'm, and, I, and, I, and I play with you know, the two sides of my brain. I'm some, two or three days a month I sit in the factories and I, I do the engineering side. The other 27 days a month I'm playing music and hanging out with the artists. My brother and all the engineering teams, they, they do the real engineering out there. But no, you know, you know, you talk about materials. So not only are instruments made out of great materials, even though most speakers are not, but think of the other things in your life that are great materials. That entire yacht is made out of great materials. Your watch, my watch, are made out of great materials. It doesn't matter if we're working with the most famous bike riders in the world, golf players in the world, Formula One drivers. Think, what would you build a great, a great road bike out of? Carbon fiber and titanium. What would you build a great golf club out of? Um, you might have a, a titanium head and graphite shaft. What would you build a Formula One car out of? Carbon fiber, titanium, stainless steel, aluminum. What would you build a, a rocket ship out of, a, a jet fighter? So we, we build custom audio equipment out of Stainless steel, titanium, aluminium, carbon fiber, you know. Uh, and no cardboard. And no cardboard and no plastic ever. But this right? is the trouble. So now I'm ruined. I, I kind of see it as like I've been infected. I now can't enjoy music at all because I can't even get close to even thinking about affording one of your systems because they are so exquisitely I, made. I fight that same battle. I'm still listening to music during the day on my phone. But there's certain things you learn, like if you're in a hotel so bathroom, you turn your phone backwards and shove it against the corner and you get a little bit more sound no, out no, of it. No, no, so, so, okay, so you are absolute, what do they call them, soundophiles? We call ourselves audiophiles. Audiophiles. Or acoustic engineers, yeah. Autistic engineers. Yeah. Acoustic. 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 <laughs> So I, my background was in lighting, and I get furious when I see bad lighting. You know, mismatching bulbs, color temperatures, flickering, it should be up instead of down, different color. What pisses you off about bad music? Sorry, bad sound, not bad music. Yeah, I love good music. I love all music if it's good. Bad sound. One is that people think that it can't be very loud because if it is, it's going to hurt your ears. And yet the other day, you and I are having a conversation in front of two DJs. In front of the speakers. Right in front of the speakers. What was it, 300 people in the audience? There were two DJs. We were at the Art Hotel in Amsterdam. Loud enough where 300 people were dancing, and you and I were talking right in front of the speaker and at, this sort of volume. at this volume level, and our ears weren't ringing later. Now, so it's clarity. The, did you go to the party last night? Super old <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have you got a sore throat? If you stayed, I didn't stay long. If I had stayed long, I would have. Yeah. Because it's nothing but distortion. So, so when you look at most sound, it's, it's, if you look at a physics book, it's PT, it's pressure times time. So, so a bad system will vibrate the whole time. So your ears are unfortunately vibrating that sound the whole time. A good system, think, think, think of, a, of, of a, I work with some of the most famous drummers in the world. If you hit a kick drum, if you stand next to the drum kit while he's playing live without a bunch of bad speakers, your ear's not ringing. A kick drum should sound something like, tum, tum, tum. not 
boom. And a bad system goes boom because the box is made out of, like you said, literally particle board or, or, or almost like cardboard. So the box is vibrating the whole time and yeah. the paper driver is vibrating the whole time and the bad amplifier is just, just really goes and throws it out and waits to get powered again so the, the driver's rocking. A great system, that enclosure, that box, that cabinet, is built really robust and inert so it's not vibrating. The drivers, in our case, are made out of the top aluminiums in the world, so not only do they not flex, but they get rid of heat. And our amplifiers actually push and pull. So we actually have an amplifier that pushes each driver out, and another amplifier that pulls each driver back. So when that kick drum goes, that driver goes, and then otherwise, you're waiting again for that beat. So you're actually subject to that sound for a small fraction of the time. That's why we're capable of talking even when the speaker's loud, because most of the time, that speaker's actually not throwing sound to your ear. It's not, con it's not distortion, it's not continuous sound. And that actually can be measured. You know, you mentioned other materials, like for the yacht industry, our amplifiers, we flash the critical components of our boards in two microns of gold, so that you never have any corrosion onto that. Our amplifiers are big enough that they store power so that we're not pulling too much continuous power out, out of that yacht and storing it. I am going to have to start making a lot of money because <laughs> it's, it's one of my missions in life is to own your system in my house, I think. Even the small ones are really even, fun. I even, don't even, even own a house. I, 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 I want... I don't even have, I don't, I don't, I'm not a home homeowner, I don't own a car, I don't own anything <laughs> at the moment. I'm living a kind of a free lifestyle. But, um, it's a good lifestyle. Sure. One thing I want in life is one of <laughs> You know, a lot of people don't realize, I mean, yes, we, we absolutely build multi, multi million dollar custom audio systems, and we also build one small, amazing speaker for $500 out of aluminum. And the world doesn't know that because we don't spend a lot of time marketing that. But I have a pair in my bedroom. So, uh, bucks. Yeah. yeah. What? We, we literally build a speaker for 500 each out of aluminum. Aluminum case. And you're not selling the crap out? We don't market to a lot of that industry because there's so much, you know, middlemen and so forth in that industry and mass, but yes, absolutely. For our, for, right, our, right. for our clients, we hook them up in their bathrooms and in their, in their hallways and stuff with stuff better than they probably ever heard in their life. Yeah. Even at those lower volumes, for sure. Good, oh, but, but, right. but, but the greatest thing is just really bringing, like I said, if you could see the love and care that the musicians and the engineers put into those studios months of their life. Yeah. To be able to hear even 10% even of that later is phenomenal. And, that, and that's, that's our mission in life is to share you know, the, the really top levels of music. Most people never heard a pipe organ play those bottom two octaves and, 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 and move in a good way your, your yeah. body. Most people forget that if they stand outside on a train, not on a train track, but near the train tracks, five minutes before they hear it, they start to feel that ground vibrating. And we want to bring those, those tactile, those realistic, and the last thing I want to say is vinyl. And that, I, I have a 10 year old daughter, and a lot of her friends, it's just lovely to see because they're already trading uh, you know, vinyl records. You know, vinyl is a much better it's resolution. Back, isn't it? It's not only coming back, in the UK last November, I think it was, digital, uh, there was more vinyl purchased in that month of, I think it was November, than digital downloads. Not that digital downloads aren't great too, but vinyl is a very tactile thing. So when I hang out with a lot of the top musicians, especially, you know, I hang out with a lot of the musicians from the 70s and the 80s, that, you know, when they made an album, they knew you were buying it on vinyl, you were bringing it home, and you were listening to it through its entirety. Nobody ran up to the record and just kept changing songs five times on each side. So you have to think about the way people used to listen to albums, so those musicians could put on a lot of songs that weren't immediately hits, but it was a lot more of their their deep down soul and style, and they knew that you were almost forced to listen to it because you put the needle on the record, you walk back from it. You would, I mean, nobody. So all of a sudden, if you think about it, when you listen to the better albums in the past, from the Beatles, from Pink Floyd, from 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 you know the Beach Boys' Pet Sounds, or you were listening to the Stones, or, or or you know, they were taking you through a ride, through a journey, through Queen of those albums. And now in modern day, because people were just one, not one hit wonders as far as the bands, but the, the listeners were just playing one song at a time. Bands, unfortunately, weren't creating albums with, with quite the um, more the theatrical or the, the performance <laughs> feeling through. Now, because of vinyl, they are again. It's amazing. And then, you know, vinyl, the artist can, can draw great paintings or, you know, you know yeah. great pictures. And, then, and it's something physically you can trade. So, and also the resolution is, is, you know, 10 times what people are used to when they're playing their MP3 players or more. The uh, resurgence of vinyl has been fantastic. And there, you know, there's, think about it, even, even, even in a family environment, father and mother come home, with a vinyl record and they walk into the living room or, or they, they pick one up and they go to put it on the, on the turntable. And that's an event, right? Just switching something on your phone really quickly isn't, but going up there and queuing, and in some cases, you know, turntables go up to half a million dollars now and they can become art themselves. 
I, I, I have a great VPI turntable at my house. It's probably a ten, fifteen thousand dollar table with its cartridge and everything. And it's, it's an event when I walk up over there and I go put the needle down on the record. It's phenomenal. And 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 what's also caused is the digital. You realize when MP3 came out, you know, it, it would it would take you know what four gigs on an iPod for you know a five hundred dollar play would only get you four gigs and and a CD seven hundred fifty megahertz. So um, you would only could put five CDs worth. So nobody kept that resolution up. That's why MP3 came along. So you could go put five hundred songs in your hand. But now you can buy a terabyte for a hundred bucks. So now resolution can go way back up. And you have a lot of music servers now coming at 192. So to give you an idea, idea CD, CD is at 44.1. So just think of the number 44. So to be able to download 192 files is fantastic. Oh, back, back up, back up, back up. So you're talking about compressions. Yeah. Well, so they degraded the quality of the music. Substantially. And unfortunately, through, the, through about the last 15 years, people didn't realize, but they were listening to 1 10th, 115 the resolution they used to listen to on a CD or on vinyl. And they didn't know it, right? Back up. And now it's going back up because finally, it's so inexpensive to, to be able to to buy a terabyte or you know yeah. or at least 128 gig or whatever in your hand. Now people are starting to learn that. Wait, I would like at least CD quality back, please, because I can store it on my you know I can put 2,000 songs on it. And by the way, if you buy a terabyte or more, you could easily you know get your resolutions up to way beyond what CD was. So in the studio all day long, they're laying down at 192. Some studios lay down at 384, and and you don't you don't have the major brands yet, unfortunately, sitting on television ads of the Super Bowl telling the youth this, but they're hearing it because they're buying vinyl again, and vinyl is way up on those resolutions. Yeah. My hearing is not as refined as others. A lot of people tell you, but if I play the vinyl and you see then the the iTunes, the MP3, the the old MP3, oh, you'd hear such a significant difference. Oh yeah. Not only that, but there's actually different masterings. So you take the Red Hot Chili Peppers California Cation, which they record at East West Studios in LA. There's different masterings that go out, that went out for the, the MP3. When those, those, so think about in the old days when you were like um, uh, setting a tape, if you ever, you're old enough to ever make your own tapes or anything like that, and you could, you, could, you could decide if you wanted to turn up your input and keep it in the green or the yellow or the red. Well, if you turn it all the way up to the red, when you played it back at low volumes, it got loud, but it was, but it was really compressed. It almost came out in distortion. If you kept it down in the green, it's cleaner, but you'd have to turn your volume up way more. Well, you know, so, so essentially you want, you want those recordings back down in the green and yellow. You don't want them, you don't want them slammed into the red and compressed. And so there's literally, you know, when you, even some of the most famous albums in history have been mastered or remastered at, 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 with different sound engineers, you know, with, with different intents in mind. And unfortunately, not only was MP3 really bad quality, but people were literally just jamming it all the way up in the red, if you will, so that when someone played it back on their car or their, or their speakers on, on, on level two, it sounded loud. So what but it can MP3? Oh, everything. Yeah, the resolution's way back up now. So online, you can download your WAV files at 44.1 or better. You can, you can download 192. Um, so just when you get online now, the, the youth, my 10-year-old daughter and her friends are learning now, you can get online. Um, I was with Jay Brown uh, at, um, at Rock Nation uh, in LA just last week before I flew here, and he started a company called Tidal. And you can download a lot of the best songs at 192, which is fantastic re re uh, resolution. And there's many other services like that that do that. You, you go online in different services, and for your dollar a song or whatever, in many cases you can decide what resolution you want to down. Uh, how about when you watch TV? Even what, if, if even my if, whole collection, sorry, my whole collection is ruined. Right, like you know a TV. When, when you order a Netflix movie, do you want the low resolution or do you want the high resolution movie for an extra dollar? Well, you can do the same thing with music. You ruined me yeah. again. <laughs> And yet your vinyl was always there, and still is, right? My, so, my, so, not my yeah. vinal, my father's vinyl. Yeah, your father's well. vinyl is... <laughs> and so that, even a vinyl from the 50s and 60s. Oh, vinyl is awesome. Yeah, vinyl's always been awesome. Yeah. Well, this is a whole analog feel to How it. How did you too. get into the marine industry then? So, you... so we originally were, you know, we, we, my brother and I started CAT in 1990, which is 27 years ago, at university at California Davis, where we went to school. We immediately networked with a lot of other engineering friends that liked music and played instruments, and our professors. And so our professors allowed us, uh, one, of our, one of our professors, uh, he was an Oxford engineering professor and then at Davis and Berkeley, and uh, they taught us a lot more about what you could do with materials. And of course, you know, you don't build, like I said, you don't build the best race cars, rock, ro race cars rocket ships, golf clubs, racing bikes, or wristwatches out of, out of paper, yeah. right? So they're like, you know, look, what, what are the advantages of stainless steel and titanium and aluminum and carbon fiber? Significant advantages, right? Better, lighter, stronger, faster. So we started building audio equipment out of these better materials 
solely for the purpose of the studios and, and some high-end homes, just for the audio quality. And you asked how we got into yachts. Well, it turns out that most of those materials are waterproof, salt-proof, and everything else, or certainly resistant. So now, we can build these speakers like the ones you have behind us. That's 316L stainless steel. That's, that's wristwatch quality stainless steel. That can sit right outside on these super yachts, right on the helicopter decks, and it can sit there in the rain, it can sit there in the sun. Yeah, yeah, it's heavy. I lost, the, I lost the nail to one of your speakers. And hey, they're beautiful, right? My brother dropped the, um, the big black box. Cause the, the other thing with the, your speakers is, is, yes, like this, but the box that it goes into is a heavy, substantial The box is going to be heavy and substantial, for sure. Because you don't want it to resonate. And, and it has to be waterproof. And then you build, when you build them into the walls, they are... Essentially, it's the wall now, isn't it? That's, that's well said. That's another thing people don't realize. You know, a standard speaker, they're built thousands at a time or tens of thousands of times, and the driver, the part that moves, which some people might know as woofer, mid-range, tweeter, you know, they might be deep. Well, we custom build every single driver at CAT. So we actually can, instead of a driver being that deep, we can make it that deep. We, we build well in excess of 85, 90% of all our equipment in Northern and Southern California. That's why we're, California audio technology. But you're not a Trump fan, are you? Because <laughs> you live in a democratic, nominated we, state. We work with politicians and world leaders all over the world, so. What's your best, so one of the things we like doing on the show is people's best stories from the industry. You've met, I would assume, everyone's, at least, every, at least everyone's favorite person. I, I've been very the fortunate in my life, for sure, yes. We've, we've worked with the top A-list musicians, Top athletes. Miley Cyrus. I've not worked with Miley Cyrus. Oh, okay. Uh, but you know, when Miley. you ask about some stories, with, with, without me telling Canada. any individual's name, yep. it's interesting when you see what celebrity or you know fame can do to this world, or obviously you know billionaires and a lot of money and so forth. Some of them are extremely private. Some of them are a little bit less. But the stories that I would say, I, I really like the human humanistic, you know, feel of it. To be able to sit down with someone at two or three in the morning. And bring them back, you know, to their to their musical childhood or to their musical, you know, dreams, and, and hear their stories, and, and to be able to pick up pictures and see them and the Queen or them and Neil Armstrong. I won't say who, who them is, you know, are, uh, and and the experiences they've been able to have in life, and a lot of that is behind the scenes. So I I think I get to enjoy whether it's an athlete or, or a famous politician or or you know a famous musician, to be able to hear their stories and their perspectives of different parts of the world, and that's where you know without being too cliche. Music, music matters. I mean, it is a universal language, and, and people do love it. And it doesn't matter their choice of politics or what country from they're from, or even their age. And and one of the things we try to talk about, and I've, I've had friends refer to music as, as a time machine. But but uh, um, you know, Alistair, our, our sales and marketing manager, met someone that told him that. But when you when you look when you look behind the scenes, it a is, lot of people remember their first kiss based on a song, or the first time they, they played a rugby match and some song was playing in the background, or, or the first time they won a golf tournament, or the first time they, 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 they graduated from college, or their, 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 grand, their daughter was born, or their granddaughter had her, you know, had, you know, had, had, had her, had her major function. And so when you can hear music and, and feel it and remember what it was like, well, it might have been a live band, or it might have been a symphony wherever you were at, or a sports stadium. I want to reproduce that for people. If it's just background noise, it, it won't happen. You know what, I'm starting to see, not see, this isn't, you don't, you don't do sound. You do sensation, you do feel. That's so well said. We, you we, don't bother with, sound is I, what travels through the air. You are set, changing. I'll, I'll come up with something. We're, 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 we're bringing an experience to people. You yeah. know, at the very beginning, I like to keep things fresh. And at the beginning of this particular conference, <laughs> <laughs> At the beginning of this particular conference, they, the very first session, that's okay. The, 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 ver, the very first session was, and they were literally the, the yacht, super yacht industry's leaders were on the stage. Where do they see super yachts in 10 years? And categorically across the board, that panel of seven or eight or whatever's up there, they all said experience based. You know, the, uh, the, the millennials are more experience based. Um, a lot of the yards are going to start building more charter ships for experience based. They don't want to look at a yacht as just something they own or something they charter or something that they visit. They want to look at a yacht as what can it do? You know, one of the yachts we just finished, they've taken, I think, 50 or 60 helicopter skiing ventures off that yacht in unique parts of the world that otherwise you couldn't even get to um, in the last year and a half since that yacht set sail. So it's no longer just build a super yacht 
float it in the med, keep it in port, and use it as a floating hotel all the time. Yeah. It, it is a structure now that you can go and photograph the best places in the world that you otherwise couldn't get to, and there's no cruise ship that takes you there, or go hella skiing 50, 60 times over a year and a half period of time, or hire Elton John or U2 or David Guetta to come on board and play this fabulous party so in, in, in an so environment. Is, I know you can't tell me how much, but it is possible to hire Jen, Elton John. Absolutely. He's still not gone, no, no, I'm not doing You that. can hire Elton John, you can hire U2, you can hire the Rolling Stones, is you can hire David Guetta. I know they don't make money off of selling records, but is that a good... You know, a musician thing? hires for something. A musician hires for a stadium tour. A musician can be hired or, or a DJ for corporate events. And in which case, that's something we're teaching our yacht owners, which is what you're saying. I don't just build speaker, you know, Kat, my teammates and I, we don't just build speakers and amplifiers. That, that's not exactly what we do. That's, that's, that's one part of what we do. We teach our clients how to bring music into their lives. And it's not just music. You said you were in lighting. You got to have lighting there. You don't want to just do it in the dark, right? And yeah. you don't just want one strobe light. So, so all of a sudden, how you utilize these yachts, way outside of our, of our industry, but I sit down with these people all the time, how about chefs? We work with some of the world's best chefs. If you hire a world chef to come on board for one night and prepare a meal, you might want to hear what he or she is saying. And if you didn't have a way to quickly and easily pump them through an audio system, they'd be, think about it, they'd be screaming at the top of their lungs in the galley. So, so all of it, you might want to hire some amazing baristas to come and, 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 and do something substantial. You might want to hear them. So all of a sudden, people just never thought of those things. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. And like I said, even yoga, there's a there's a, there's a mood and a zen feeling that you can you can put yeah. evenly at low volume levels, but with some deep bass that you don't even hear so much as you feel it, and that's going to set that entire tone and the mood to that that whole part of your yacht for that morning. Oh, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Now I'm going to be dreaming about. I've got to get you out of my dreams, but I'm going to be dreaming more in sensations now. <laughs> God damn. But it's really not. I mean, it's so rewarding. It, you know, yes, we work with some of the wealthiest people, but you know, like I said, my, my 10 year old daughter, when I put seven, eight of her friends in front of these systems, and you know, they hear better than we do. And, and, and oh, all of a sudden, you know, as soon as you turn on, you know, a DJ takes you through a ride, right? They start at lower BPMs, they move it to higher BPMs. And I, you know, just by putting in one song, then another song, then another song, you know, now my daughter and her friends are dancing and appreciating it, just yeah. like, I don't, you know, it's amazing what, you know, the moods you can set. And so of course, we still work closely with the wine industry, you know, we work closely with all, you know, there's there's people that set up excursions to go see the Titanic or to, you know, to where hire people. Where can, where can people go and experience and get ruined? Well, the first thing I tell people to experience is listen to any live musician unplugged. Go listen unplugged, to a, go yeah. listen to a jazz quartet or a trio or, or what have you and realize what instruments can sound like. I was in St. Paul's Cathedral and they were playing the organ there. Yeah. I, some, somehow they let me into the choirs area. And, I will yeah, never forget, never forget that, that feeling, experience. right? And it wasn't this. It, you're right. It was the yeah, it's floor. the floor. You can feel the wooden it. So exactly right. Go sit in a, in a cathedral and listen to the pipe organ. Yeah. Go listen to a choir at eight o'clock at night in Dor yeah. Notre Dame. Go stand outside in a rainforest or even just on a hike near where you live and listen to the birds flying overhead. But but if I want to recreate that, I need speakers over there. So of course you know they're they're beautiful or they're hidden or both. Yeah. So so you, yeah, it's home theater is not just some big bang movie. That, 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 that's, that's Tom Cruise, you know, being chased by, by a car or a jet or a yacht. Though that's still awesome. How about video games? Rob mentioned how much more they come to life when things can be theatrical. They're already you know, dangerous I, enough as it is. You know, we, you know, we work with a lot, yeah, that's right. You know, we, we work with a lot of the uh, the 3D audio companies as well. You know, I'm very, very close friends with uh, Wilfred Van Balen from Oral 3D. In fact, we were there last week and we're going to be there again tomorrow. You know, we work with Dolby, and, you know, so many of these people. Um, uh, or, so, oh, that, that's, oh, Dolby. They were the original. The original back in the 70s, 60s? No, it was way before that, wasn't it? Certainly Dolby is, 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 is one of the pioneers with a lot of different, you know, they back back in the tape days they were doing things for noise suppression, you know, and, and now yeah. now they're one of the leaders in 3D sound for sure. They're still absolutely Oh, for sure, yeah. They call that Dolby Atmos. Um, Wilfred Van Balen at Oral 3D is in Belgium. They're another one of the, you know, the 3D formats. And, and you have to understand, so, so first, you know, back in the 50s, people were listening to one speaker. Then eventually two. Then for a while in the 60s and 70s, four. Then five. Well, now in modern day, you go, go look around the cinema. You can see a hundred speakers, yeah. right? And how do we get a hundred speakers into someone's living room or into their yacht without having to see a hundred speakers? So that's where you know our custom building processes. We can build some of the world's best speakers into 15 centimeters, or in the U.S., you know, three and a half inches, five and a half inches to, to literally fit in their walls and floors. Your website, right? yeah, yeah. Some, of some of it. You know what's you know what's frustrating? Do, uh, what's yeah. frustrating about the website is literally well over 99% of our best speakers. 
uh, uh, systems and photographs can't be shared on the web. Yeah. And 99% of my best stories, unfortunately, can't even be delivered to this video, but hopefully you're getting a feel for it. But when you asked about listening to it, everybody's an audiophile. Even 10-year-old boys and girls, and quite frankly, they got better ears than, than, than men and women do at the age of 60. And, yeah. and then how about our, our clients at 70 that are maybe even partially deaf in one ear? We can actually calibrate the systems to let them hear things they otherwise haven't heard in their life in 20 or 30 years. And we'll make grown men cry. And so, you know, just bringing, you know, it's one of our senses, but, but, but it's not just hearing, it's feeling. I mean, think about the five senses. And that's where wines come in, or foods. You know, or, 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 or like, it's actually more than five senses, yeah. right? I mean, we, we could debate that all day long. I think it's unlimited. Yeah. I mean, you got your subconscious that nobody even talks about. Or if you want to get really spun out, you got time, right? So. Yeah, exactly. Well, Brian, absolutely. That was lovely, Lee. Appreciate it. Pleasure. It was a, it was like a pleasure. It's all mine. And uh, your website is California uh, Audio. CalAudioTech.com. Cal so C A L like California, A U D I O Audio. T E C H. Like Cal Audio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why haven't they got that domain name? Who has that? Ca Cal Audio Tech is our whole domain. Yeah, name. but who has Cal Audio? I I don't know. But we you know we're known as California Audio Technology, and we're also known as Cat. So I didn't yeah. want to be just known as Cat. Okay. So, you know, there's do there's dog fans in the world too. So. That's true. <laughs> you just go down there to cat, like next thing you know, we're going to be out there selling, you know, <laughs> litter boxes and cat toys and everything else. Yeah. Well, cats need music. <laughs> <laughs>